Mom. Has to be. What? You gonna sponsor my race car? That's what I'd like to know exactly no. what this uh, <laughs> Alright, now for part two of our video about full throttle shift with Honda. In our Part one, we went over how to physically wire up our switch that we're setting up for our clutch to be able to use the feature full throttle shift. Now, we're going to come in here to our S manager to go over our settings together. So, I've already uploaded my tune and I've come into the parameter setting and then I've come over here and clicked on our full throttle shift and I have cleared all this out so that we can fill it out together this is what you should see when you come in here and uh, see it for the first time yourself and it's automatically disabled so we're gonna come in here and we're gonna choose whatever pin we decided to wire into the ECU for me, in my instance, I picked B5, the air conditioning switch. It was the one that I had open. Um, it, you do not want to uh, choose always on. Uh, it seems that it would be the easiest, but it is not. And I will explain why here in a second. So, we go ahead and we choose our B5. And the reason why we would not choose always on is it's basically just going to act like another rev limiter. So if we set our, our shift limiter RPM here at 6,000, when we're driving down the street with it always on, as soon as it hits that 6,000, it's just going to be hitting a rev limiter. Bang. And that's not what we're after. There's other rev limiters that we can go in here and choose to fulfill that that need or that function so what we're here for is full throttle shift not for another rev limiter so where would we set our shift limiter rpm well depending on if your car is if your engine is factory with factory valve springs or if it's fully built that's going to determine somewhat how high are you revving your engine are you revving it to 8000 9000 you know that that matters but for me i rev mine to 8500 and uh i usually set this around 5500 rpm that gives me plenty enough time in between shifts to make sure I can get it done smoothly now if I was to shift from at 8500 rpm and I either miss the shift or I shifted real slow and it come down to 5500 rpm what's gonna happen is it's gonna hit a soft rev limiter and it's gonna maintain that engine speed at 5500 rpm as long as my foot is on the throttle it's going to stay there at 5500 rpm and it's it's really a neat feature but if you shift faster than than that and it works correctly when you shift at 58 or 50 at 8500 rpm basically as soon as you press the clutch in and the switch goes on it's like an ignition cut and it's extremely smooth so in between your shifts it's just like an ignition cut and it's extremely smooth when you uh, use this feature the first time you're going to wonder why you waited so long to hook it up it's really neat so we're going to come down here next to go to our minimum speed well if you have an idea of how long your first gear is um, say you're able to do 40 miles an hour in first gear well what happens if you accidentally short shift and you're still trying to use the full throttle feature um, you don't want to run into a situation where you're at too low of a uh, speed 
for it to come on. So what I do is I set this at 20 miles an hour. It's low enough that it gives me enough grace period, you know, or enough grace that it, it should work no matter what speed I'm at. As long as I'm above 20 miles an hour, which I should be if I'm trying to use it, and that just seems to work fine for me. Now, our minimum uh, throttle. I set this somewhat low too because I want it to come on as quick as possible. I don't want anything slowing it down. Like if I set this at 80% and my foot's, you know, uh, my for some reason my foot doesn't make it all the way down to 80%. I don't want anything to happen. I don't want anything to happen like that. I want it to work consistently. So what I do is I set this at 25% throttle. It gives me plenty of grace period and it works great. So these are the settings that I work with in my car. You can mess around and, and play with it as you see fit. But the numbers I've given here should work really well for you. If you have uh, a stock engine, you might want to consider lowering this down to uh, 5,000 or, or 4,500 to try it out for the first time. And you can figure out how quickly you can shift and you can change this from then on. Now that we've done this, we've went over all of our settings here are going to work the way we want them to. We have to figure out if we need to invert the input. And there's an easy way to test if we need to invert the input. And there's an easy way to test if our wiring is all done correctly. And I'll show you that here now. So we're going to go live and we're going to test and see if uh, our clutch switch is going to work the way we want to. And we're going to come over here to our sensors. So basically if you don't have this set up here, there's an easy way to do it. You just come over literally to your sensors and you click on it and it pops right up. I just have mine drawled over here to the side because I like to be able to see it. Now if we come down here and we slowly scroll our little arrow across, you can read what these are. So right here is the air conditioning switch. This is what we're after. So right, the car's off right now. I'm about to turn it on. But when we push the clutch in, this light or this switch should pop on. And that's what we're about to test here. Let's see if I can get it. Our lightning bolt is yellow. That means we can go ahead and, and go live. Now we're live and we come down onto our air conditioning switch. And if I go ahead and press the clutch in, it should come on. are live there okay now now we're live again I bumped the computer okay so now we're live again we'll come down here and I'll push the clutch in and bang our switch is coming on when we want it when I push the clutch down to the floor it comes on when I lit it up it comes off now I have my switch coming on about two to three inches from the floor when I'm pressing the clutch in, it's about two or three inches from the floor, the clutch, the switch comes on. Now what happened, what would happen if uh, that was exactly opposite? If it was lit up right now, what we would do is just invert the input. And then that's how we would go ahead and solve that. Um, that way uh, you don't get out there and try to test it and it doesn't work the way you want. So just remember, you want it off with the clutch out, and you want it on with the clutch in. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this feature. It's really neat, and uh, I appreciate your time. And if you like the video, please give it a like and subscribe. Check out some of my other uh, videos I've done. I do a lot of stuff on Honda, and I'm currently working on a couple product reviews. Uh, thanks for your time. You have a good one.